welcome everybody. Um, I'm going to talk to you tonight about two of our go slow uh, holidays. Uh, first of all, one in East Anglia, uh, which is running between June the 26th and July the 2nd this year. And then I'm going to tell you about uh, our go slow in Dorset trip, uh, which is June the 19th to June the 25th. So it is actually possible to do these um, back to back if, if you want to. First of all, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I've actually been leading Nature Trek trips now for 21 years. I started in 2002. Uh, I've led over uh, about 30 um, full holidays, mostly in Europe, uh, botany and, and general natural history ones. And the picture on the left is me up a mountain in Switzerland on my very first uh, Nature Trek trip. And uh, the one on the right is actually from last year, and that's from uh, the Dorset trip, which I'm going to tell you about. Uh, birds are my first love. I worked for the British Trust for Ornithology for 26 years, um, but I did train as a botanist, and, and basically I love all wildlife, um, history, geology, you name it. Um, any, anything that moves or, or grows, I love. Butterflies, dragonflies. Um, but I do have to admit to a particular fondness for wild bees. So do be on the lookout for wild bees in this talk. So what do we mean by the go slow holidays? If, if any of you have not been on one or, or know about them, they're very relaxed, as the name suggests. We use high quality hotels and serving superfood. And I can certainly attest to the fact that both the hotels on these trips do serve amazing food. The excursions themselves are leisurely. We don't go out early in the morning. Um, the, the, the morning and evening outings are entirely optional. During the day, we'll stop for coffee breaks, comfort breaks, and as well as the sort of famous generous picnic lunches, um, we will also a couple of days during the week um, have lunch out. We'll just spend more time looking at what we're finding, thinking about what we're finding. And we return to the hotel mid-afternoon, which gives you plenty of time for relaxation and also time to enjoy anything else you might wish to do. So first of all, as I said, I'm going to tell you about the, the East Anglian one. It's actually the second one that's running, but uh, this is a new trip this year. And uh, I notice on the website it's down as Go Slow in Brex and Fens. So when most people think about wildlife in East Anglia, they possibly think about the North Norfolk coast, the Norfolk broads, somewhere like that, usually on the coastal area. But this trip is going to be concentrating very much on Breckland. Um, it is an, an ancient area, um, a very mysterious area, and it's characterised by twisted pines, sandy, dry soils and amazing wide, wide skies. And it is also home to some quite incredible wildlife. And I feel it's one of those areas that perhaps needs to be better known. We will be based in a hotel um, on the south side of the Brex near Bury St Edmunds. It is a modern hotel. Um, it's a very, very nice one. It has a two AA Rosette uh, restaurant and uh, it has lots of facilities for you to enjoy. Um, the swimming pool, the sauna um, and all of that and the gym are all available for us to use as part of our, our package. It is also a golfing hotel. So if anybody does fancy a round of golf during the week, they're, they're, they're welcome to do that. And if you really want to uh, spoil yourself, there's also a spa on site. But we will have to pull ourselves away from the hotel and go out and explore. And Breckland is a very unusual area. Very, it is very dry, very sandy, um, and it's probably closest to somewhere like the Russian steppes you would have to, to go to find um, the nearest similar habitats. The Brex covers an area of about 370 uh, square miles across the Norfolk Suffolk borders. And uh, some of the wildlife that we'll find will be things like the rabbits, which obviously keep the uh, turf very short, but also woodlarks here, um, the amazing Lulula, their songs, and strange Breckland plants like here, the Spanish cat fly. We'll visit Cavernham Heath, which is the, the absolute archetypal, if you like, uh, Breckland Heath. 
um, where the dominant ground vegetation is actually a lichen. It's a very odd place. And there we will hopefully catch up with one of the key Breckland species, which is, of course, stone curlew. And here's one of my bees. It's a coastal species that's found in land in, in the Brex. And it has the most fantastic pantaloons here. And it is obviously called the pantaloon bee. You cannot escape Thetford Forest itself. It's uh, 47,000 acres of plantation, mostly planted in the 1920s. Um, and you generally think of it as a pine monoculture, but that is actually far from the truth. There are lots of areas of other kinds of woodland in Thetford Forest. And it's an area that we will be crisscrossing um, as we visit other sites, but we will also be looking at some of the um, particular wildlife to be found in Thetford Forest. Uh, we have a very large herd of wild red deer. They're not just found in the Scottish Highlands. Uh, crossbill is a, is a very characteristic species of uh, Thetford Forest. Siskin breed here as well. We'll spend a bit of time looking at the flowers and vipers bug gloss seems to be a real uh, characteristic species around here and it is fantastic for insects. And in the rivers that run through Thetford Forest is well known for its population of otters. So that it's always an, uh, uh, a chance. I've sort of given the impression that Breckland is a very dry area. And whilst that's true, there are areas of water and where they occur, they are absolutely incredible for wildlife. And one of the places we'll visit is Thompson Common, where you will learn about the weirdly named pingos, which each of these little blue pools here is. And Thompson Common is really good for invertebrates in particular. And uh, one of the key species there is the scarce emerald damselfly, which is the top one uh, on the screen. And uh, we'll be able to hopefully compare it directly with its much more common, uh, common emerald. We'll visit Lake and Heath Fen, which is just on the western side of the Brex, literally on the Breck Fen edge. Um, and RSPB Lake and Heath Fen is a very well-known reserve, a fairly new reserve. And hopefully we will encounter some of the special species there with crane being the big pull. There are marsh harriers and bittern as well, but also good numbers of cuckoo, things like sedge warbler and maybe even grasshopper warbler um, and other interesting species. Lackford Lakes, which is a man-made wetland, uh, is another place that we will visit. And again, lots of potential fantastic wildlife to be found. Uh, we've got common snipe here and water rail is always a, a good species there. There's some fantastic opportunities for taking pictures of kingfishers and always the possibility of our special Norfolk hawker dragonfly. There's time for relaxation and we're very near the nearby town of Bury St Edmunds, uh, where the cathedral, which you can see the tower of um, here, was once just the gate guard to the massive uh, abbey, which is now in ruins. But even in the abbey grounds, we can find wildlife like the, the Breckland Hoary Mullion here. And on another day, we'll be visiting the Suffolk Valley uh, Fens, which is one of the ones that I do a one day um, trip for. Uh, and orchids will be our main focus at that time of year. And they are an absolutely incredible area to visit. There's lots of other wildlife as well. Uh, we have pretty good chance of seeing common lizard and we've got a little baby here in the centre of the screen. But if you look up at the top, you'll actually see his mum. The main draw of this uh, Suffolk Valley fens I mentioned is the orchids and there are some incredibly rare ones. And the, the tip top one, if you like, is this little chap, which doesn't have an English name, although the locals do tend to call it the ice cream orchid. And it's Dactyloriza ocreluca, which up until very recently was only known from the one site that we will be visiting. But the other one, and if you're scared of spiders, you might not like the next snot slide. The other star species is our fen raft spider. And they are actually quite cute, but they're also very large. They do eat fish, but not, as the locals will tell you, uh, small children and uh, passing dogs and cats. They're not quite that big. 
I mentioned the wide skies and as a sort of finishing uh, slide for this one, OK, taken in the winter, but this was um, outside our back window here just a couple of days ago. The skies around Breckland are quite incredible. So that's a, a whistle stop tour of, of the go, go Slow in East Anglia new trip. And now I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Go Slow in Dorset, which says running uh, from the 19th of June to the 25th of June. This will be its third year. I've led the previous two years as well. It's in, in the area that I actually was born and, and grew up in. So I do know it uh, very well. The area that we will be concentrating on mostly is this sort of area on the south, the Isle of Purbeck the famous Jurassic Coast, and also the area around Weymouth and uh, Port and Bill uh, that was mentioned in the previous um, talk. So Heath's amazing scenery, chalk cliffs, wildlife, and also obviously in the company of dinosaurs, you never know, we might be lucky. We stay in the beautiful Purbeck village of Corfe Castle, and the Hotel we stay in is Morstan's Manor, which is a grade two Elizabethan um, hotel. It's perfectly placed um, to explore all these wonderful sites. And the afternoon that we get there, we will start off by going out and sort of having a, a, an overview of the Isle of Purbeck and Pool Harbour. And we'll spend a very short period of time just having a quick look, getting a feel for some of the wildlife of the area, going down into the wet flushes where we'll see um, some of the key species. There's lots of insectivorous species. We have butterwort and sundew is here and like little um, Christmas lights, like little fairy lights dotted through uh, at that time of year, the bog ashfordel will be in flower. And I actually took the picture of the plant before I realised there was a small um, butterfly photobombing this. And that is actually a silver studded blue, which is one of our target species um, for the week. We will, of course, be visiting the Jurassic Coast. And this is the quite incredible uh, Lulworth Cove. And you will have an opportunity to go to the visitor centre there if you wish to find out more about the geology of the site. But we'll also be just enjoying um, the scenery and the wildlife. We'll walk and it's a very gentle walk to the nearby stair hole, which is a new cove uh, forming. And again, we'll, we'll enjoy some of the wildlife to be found there. The beautiful sea carrot, it's, it's really furry sea carrot. It has to be seen to be believed. And we are uh, usually pretty lucky with silver wash fertility here at Lulworth. And also there's bound to be um, ravens flying around, cronking um, as we enjoy the, the site. And then we'll move across to the iconic Durdle Door. It is a beautiful walk, um, just, a, just a stunning area. And we're looking out across here. You can just see in the distance there Portland, um, the Isle of Portland on the horizon. And again, lots of wildlife to be found here. It's a really good site for white throats, which we should hear singing in the scrub. Um, there's lots of marbled whites here as well. And this one, I've put, a, I've put an exclamation mark because when I put the photo up, it's one I took a few years ago, I noticed that this poor marbled white butterfly has just been got by a small white crab spider um, on that flower. And uh, this is a very good site for corn bunting as well, where, where we'll hear their sort of jangling keys song and hopefully get good views of them too. But the star um, at this site at Durdle Door and around Lulworth Cove is another butterfly. It is the Lulworth skipper, which is an incredibly range restricted uh, species in Britain. But there are generally good numbers there. And I'm hoping this will work for you um, just to give you an idea of what it's like. And this is actually Vipers Bugloss that I mentioned in the East Anglian uh, tour as well. Lots of uh, Lulworth skippers there. One of our optional trips will be a slightly early morning one, not, not silly o'clock at all, but we go out with the amphibian and reptile conservation um, and have a look for uh, reptiles. And in fact, I have to tell you that, that uh, this past year, we did actually manage to find all six native British reptiles during this week. And during this 
particular walk out with the chap from um, ARC, we came across a basking smooth snake, in this case, a lovely female smooth snake. I um, don't know if you can just see her little nose poking out here. And under license, um, we were able to examine her a little bit more closely. Absolutely gorgeous animal. We did find a second uh, smooth snake under one of the, the tins, as well as um, common lizard, slow worm, and in fact, weirdly grass snake here. Um, but say so we've got a chance of finding all of the native reptiles and there's other wildlife here as well, of course, and, and hobby. Uh, we had fantastic views of hobby hunting just over our heads. <clears throat> and then you can't go to this area without heading out into Pool Harbour itself. And this is the ferry across to Brown Sea Island and we will spend a day there. And again, there's lots of fantastic things to see. It's it's a beautiful island. There's a large part of it is um, run by the National Trust, but there is also a small part that is dedicated uh, to the Dorset Wildlife Trust, and we'll certainly explore that. It's got large seabird colonies and um, things like that. We we're also very lucky last year to find sand lizard here, um, which is surprising because it hasn't long been known on Brown Sea Island. But one of the draws here are the tern colonies, and lots and lots of sandwich terns with their very distinctive little yellow tips to their beaks here and just to give you an idea of what the <clears throat> excuse me what the tern colonies are like there's just islands um, covered in common terns and uh, sandwich terns there's also large numbers of black-headed gulls breeding here with their really really beautiful young and you quite often see spoonbills here as well but of course, one of the main draws for Brown Sea Island is red squirrel. And we've been very lucky um, on both trips uh, to get incredibly close views of these wonderful little animals. Another day we will explore Dulston Country Park, which is actually on the Isle of Purbeck. There's a really, really interesting visitor centre there and a restaurant where we will have lunch. And we'll do a gentle cliff top walk um, along the edge uh, at Durlston, where we'll see lots of interesting plants like those fantastic sea carrots again, and ivory broom rape is a particularly um, good uh, find here. And we might even be lucky, as we were last year, to find the seventh species of British reptile, a non native one, because there is a colony of wall lizards here. But the main draw of Durlston is that uh, seabird cliff. And at this time of year, we, we should be seeing certainly guillemots and razorbills uh, with young. There's almost invariably peregrine around. There's fulmer nesting there and there's also shag. So we get good views of all these birds, which are just great to see. And because Dulston is just on the outskirts of uh, Studland, um, of Swanage, sorry, uh, you then have the opportunity to come back to the hotel uh, by steam train should you wish to and everybody so far has chosen to do that and the will either come round to the station to pick you up at Corf or you can literally just go through the gate because it's just behind the hotel and a lot of people then take the opportunity to go and visit Corf Castle um, itself as well. We have one optional evening trip um, and that will be to see and hear Nightjar You can just see him sitting on the branch there and churring. We actually got, um, I meant to say, we also have a night jar evening uh, and the go slow in East Anglia one as well. And on two of the days, we will head towards the west, down towards Weymouth and, and Portland, and in an area where even the A roads um, have drifts of orchids. These sort of purple smears on this photograph here are pyramidal orchids. And this is right by the side of the A road that runs down to Weymouth. There's several great reserves to visit um, down here, which is why we're sort of heading this way. And the first is the fabulous urban reserve of Radipole, which used to be my stomping ground when I was a kid. And we've got a really good chance of seeing things like bearded tit here, uh, great white egret, um, 
and Chetty's warbler, but also there's a large number of marsh harriers there. So you get this bizarre juxtaposition of marsh harriers against uh, buildings in the background. We'll also visit nearby Lodmore Reserve, where there's a large colony of uh, common terns. And we will amble our way down towards Portland Bill itself. It's just an incredible place to go. It's very, very unusual feel about it, Portland. And there are some really nice uh, pieces of wildlife to be seen. This is golden samphire growing below uh, Portland Bill Lighthouse, uh, quite a rare plant, very range restricted. And we'll have a very short walk around the bill and there's lots of other wildlife to be seen, some of which gets really close. Um, here we were in the process of being mugged by a rock pipit. On the way back through, we'll stop up at the Portland Heights and look back inland along Chesil Beach. And as we sort of head into the photograph and round to the left, we're heading west uh, towards Devon as we're looking here. And even here, there's, there's wildlife, and this one's perhaps a little bit of a, a, a challenge for you. Um, we found a butterfly here. There is a grayling butterfly in this photograph. And just in case it's a little too well camouflaged, there he is. And then the last morning, we'll go back down onto Studland Heath to get really get a feel for the amazing wildlife down there. Some of the things that we haven't had a chance to see definitely come across seeker deer which are very common in the area lots of dragonflies and we've got some unusual ones here we've got scarce chaser on the left uh, black darter female black darter in the middle and a keeled skimmer on the right quite often find emperor moth caterpillars and i did warn you about the bees and this one is actually my favorite bee of all which is the green-eyed bee which is very common on studland and then we will of course during all of this hope to come across the star species, which is our Dartford warbler, which is hopefully pretty much a done deal on Studland Heath. And that's everything from me. And I'm just hoping that um, I will get to meet some of you in person on either or possibly even both of those tours. I'd love that very much. Thank you.